Hey guys and welcome to Slash Rex Games. So I'm just going to set the scene. You've spent hours and hours toiling away creating some of the most beautiful maps you've ever created in your life. But then you realize you don't know how to create some sort of level select so you can get your player to that room. Or maybe one of the other rooms that you've created. So today in this video that's what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be showing you guys how you can create an awesome little level select screen which is going to allow keyboard as well as mouse interaction. So let's jump straight into the code and I can show you how you can do this quite easily. Alright, so to start this off, I'm going to expand my sprites and into buttons and show you exactly what I've got here. I've got three levels in this game. Each one of them, we're going to give a button. So this is the deselect and the select. And for the desert map, the deselect and the select. For the graveyard map, the deselect and the select. And also we have the play button just in case the user is using the mouse. So I'm going to expand objects. We're going to need a new folder over here. I'm going to call this buttons. And in that folder, I want to create OBJ BTN parent. This is going to handle the changing of the image index depending on whether a level selector is selected. So let's add a step event. And here I'm going to say if selected, then image index equals one. And that's because the selected image index is the first index, not the zero. Else, image index equals zero. As simple as that. So when we create objects to represent these three um, selectables over here, each one of them is going to inherit in this step event from this parent. So let's go ahead and create the very first level selectable so that's going to be for this uh, foresty map obj btn lvl1 so object button level one we're going to give this the first level sprite we're going to add a create event obviously his image speed needs to be zero because there's two sub images so we don't want them to flicker between the two and I'm going to say on going to this room, this one is going to be selected by default because one of them needs to be selected by default just in case the user hits the enter key. Okay, then we need to go into a step event over here and we need to say event inherited. And because we're inheriting from the parent, we need to make sure that that parent is set. Buttons, object, button parent. Okay, so he's going to get the step event that's in this guy. And later on, we can add more code down here just in case we want. Then let's add a left pressed event. And this is going to say, well, with object BTN LVL2 and with OBJ BTN LVL3. So those are the other buttons that we will create in a moment with those two buttons. They're no longer going to be selected. And instead, we're going to be selected. And now what we can do is we can copy this name and duplicate this object. Let's give it the level 2 sprite. Let's call it objbtn level 2, the create event go into there okay so selected needs to be false because it's not the default first one in the step event it also inherits so that's just our reminder over there in our left pressed this is gonna say well if I click on object button level 2 then level 1 isn't gonna be selected and level 3 isn't gonna be selected but I will be selected very good and then I can go ahead and duplicate this guy and call him object button level 3 also in his create, select is false, his step inherits from the parent, and left pressed, what that's going to do, well it's going to say that number 2 is not selected and number 1 is not selected, so let's do that in order, 1 is not selected and 2 is not selected, but number 3 is selected, so that's down over there, and he needs to be given the correct sprite. Okay cool, so now we've got three selectables, 
We've told them how to behave when we click them. We've told them how to behave as the games progress in steps. And we've told them how to behave when they are created. So now let's go ahead and create the play button. Object, button, play. All right, so there's just a single sub image in here, so nothing fancy. It's just mainly going to have an event to say, let's go to the room, depending on which of these guys here is selected. So left pressed, drag in some code. Very simple, I'm gonna say if object VTN level one dot selected, well then room go to RM level one. And just to show you, if I go down here and expand these levels, so level one is our awesome forest map, level two is the awesome desert map, and level three is the spooky graveyard map. All right, back to the action. So if number one is selected, then go to number one. Then we can paste these twice more. If level two is selected, go to level two. And if level three is selected, go to level three. That is very, very straightforward stuff. So that's how you would create a level select for a mouse operated game. Let's go ahead and actually create a room that we can put this in. So RM uh, level select. I'm gonna do 1280 by 720. And I'm gonna have a background, background choice, that looks good. Let's ask about this grid. Let's expand that. Objects, zoom out. Let's say the play button can go in the bottom right. And then we've got level one over there, level two in the middle, and level three on the right. And we can space these out nicely. Just like that. That looks pretty cool. Maybe slightly up a bit. Mm, I'm gonna say 16. There we go, that's more centered. Awesome stuff. Okay, so which means when we get to the screen and we click one of these guys, it's gonna change that selected variable to true. It's gonna change the selected variable the other two to false. And then it means when we click on our play, it's gonna take us to that game room. So now let's actually also implement this solution in a game where you'd only be able to use the keyboard. Now in that level select, which I'm moving to the very first room that the player visits, we have this object button play, and we can use him to listen to all kinds of cool events. Firstly, he's gonna take us to the game world if the user clicks on him, but also, how about he listens to when the player presses the left and right arrow keys? So let's grab some code over here. And let's say if keyboard check pressed VK left else if keyboard check pressed VK right do something all right so if the user presses left well if object btn level one is selected, then the left is gonna mean that obviously object btn level one is no longer selected. And object btn level three is selected. Sort of gonna wrap around the screen. Else if what happens if level two is selected? Well, level two is no longer going to be selected. Moving left, which means it goes from two to one. Let's add another else if. Okay, so what happens if number three is selected? Well, obviously number three is no longer going to be selected, and it's moving to the left, which means it's going to be number two now. So there we go. If we were number one, we become number three. If we're number two, we become number one. And if we're number three, we become number two. That's when going left. And when going right, it's gonna be somewhat of the opposite. I'm gonna paste these down here just because it's a little bit easier. And what I'm gonna say, if one is selected, I'm going to the right, it means I'm moving to number two. 
So one is no longer selected, number two is. If I'm at number two and I press the right key, I'm no longer on number two and I'm heading to number three. If I'm on number three and I push the right key, I'm no longer on number three and I'm wrapping around back to number one. Just like that. So that's going to handle the left and right key presses. And it's also going to wrap those around. So you've got a sort of carousal way of doing things. Now, if you've got a game that has no mouse, we also need some way to go to the next level without the click. Now, over here we had that in the left press, but what happens if we copy this code and add another event, a key press enter event perhaps, and just paste it, and just paste it straight into there. Pretty much does the same thing, doesn't it? If number one selected, go to the first game room, number two selected, go to the second game room, etc. Just like that. And believe it or not, that's exactly what it takes to create a really awesome level selector in your game. So let's actually go ahead and test this out and see how it works. So let's save everything. And let's run our pretty awesome game. Alright, so here we are within our really cool level selector. We've got three maps and I can click them and select them just like this and I select one the other two deselect just like we saw in the intro and I can also use the left and right arrow keys to do the exact same thing so let's see what happens if I select the graveyard map and click play bam we are spawned within the graveyard map just like that really cool stuff so let's go escape and now I want to go to the desert map play now I'm in the desert really awesome right over there we're in our map that we've selected enter key and click and play all work so just like that that's how you create a really cool level select screen i hope you found this tutorial educational and helpful please feel free to comment rate and subscribe if you really like this video as well as my other ones i do invite you to check out my patreon campaign you can check out all kinds of new resources goodies links suggestions tips and tricks once again i'd like to thank gamer2d for these wonderful free resources Links for this project file can be found in the description. If you have any suggestions for really cool tutorials, you can put them in the comments or send me a PM. I do look forward to checking out what you guys have to say about this in the comments. So until next time, happy coding, and I'll see you then.